Welcome back to our session. Now, Kanito Prisjanovic will make the second and last presentation of today. She works as a research assistant at the Sarajevo University Faculty of Law in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and her main field of study is criminal law. Today, she will present us the country report of Bosnia and Herzegovina about the issues of Istanbul Convention. We look forward to hearing your presentation, Kanita. You have 30 minutes, and now the stage is yours. Thank you, Begum. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be a part of this year's summer school as well for a third time now as a lecturer. Uh, as Degim already said, I will focus solely on the implementation of Istanbul Convention uh, in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, or so-called uh, country report uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I would like uh, to start by emphasizing the, uh, that uh, we, as a West Balkan country, are also a, con a country which is a member of Council of Europe. And therefore, we were also uh, represented uh, in the ad hoc committee, uh, which was uh, actually in duty to uh, to make a text of the Istanbul Convention. So we had our representative there as the director of the Gender Equality Agency of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, afterwards, uh, when the uh, convention was adopted, we uh, signed the convention uh, on 8 March uh, 2013, which is a highly symbolic date, uh, a landmark date, uh, while uh, because it is worldwide known as an uh, international uh, woman date. And uh, it, there is one more point that needs to be uh, emphasized. Uh, in all of the legal uh, analyses, regardless of the topic, it is always uh, said that Bosnia and Herzegovina has highly complex constitutional structure and that therefore the uh, decision making process is uh, also uh, highly complex and has implications uh, of it. However, uh, despite of it, uh, it did not uh, affect uh, all of the uh, pr uh, procedures regarding the Istanbul Convention, and we were among uh, the first member states uh, of the Council of Europe to ratify the Convention. Uh, it was ratified on 7th November 2013, and it uh, entered into the force uh, on uh, 1st August 2014. Uh, I would like to stress that Bosnia and Herzegovina did not express any reservations uh, vis a vis the provisions uh, of the convention uh, with, when it signed and ratified the convention, uh, which means uh, our full commitment to the values of the Istanbul Convention. Uh, the result today is that the convention is applied throughout the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, via legislation and policies adopted pursuant to the constitutional competencies of the different levels of government. Uh, I'm uh, saying about uh, the different levels of uh, government because uh, we are always talking about state level and uh, the parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which are uh, two uh, entities, Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Republic of Srpska, uh, as well as the Brčko district. Uh, so we approach the implementation of convention by, uh, first of all, uh, uh, adopting the framework strategy for the implementation of the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence for the period from 2015 to 2018, uh, which was later followed by the establishing of the board for monitoring and uh, reporting on implementation on the Istanbul Convention on Femicide in Bosnia-Herzegovina, which we have nowadays and, and which will really uh, monitors uh, the implementation of the convention with duties to analyzing the implementation of policies and measures, assessing the status of implementation of the Istanbul Convention and making recommendations for more efficient implementation than analyzing data about murder cases from the gender perspective or so-called femicide and making recommendations for further actions aimed at uh, preventing femicide. Uh, recent uh, developments uh, regarding the Istanbul Convention uh, 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 must, from my point of view, be assessed uh, initially by uh, considering the framework uh, which we have uh, for implementation of the uh, Istanbul Convention. So, uh, first of all, of course, uh, our constitutional provisions. Uh, we, as a complex state, have a state-level constitution, so Constitution of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and also Constitution of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, the Republic of Srpska, and the Brčko district has its own statute. 
And in uh, the constitutions of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and the Republic of Serbska, uh, there is a prohibition of uh, gender based violence as a prerequisite uh, for the prevention of violence against women and domestic violence. And also, Statute of Bridge Code District of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina contains a general prohibition on discrimination on any grounds, which also includes, of course, uh, gender based discrimination. Uh, talking about the laws, we have uh, the law on gender equality in Bosnia and Herzegovina from 2010. Uh, also, the law on the prohibition of discrimination in Bosnia and Herzegovina from 2009, and the, the family laws of uh, Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, the Republic of Srpska, and which was uh, Talking uh, precisely about the protection of, from domestic violence, uh, it is highly important that we also have lex specialis uh, in this area uh, or special pieces of legislation called uh, the laws on protection from uh, domestic violence of uh, the Republic of Srpska uh, from 2012. The ratio of Bosnia Herzegovina a uh, year uh, after, and the Protocol District from 2018. Uh, they are focused solely uh, and comprehensively on the protection of victims of uh, the domestic violence, and that's exactly their significance. And last but not least important, uh, we have uh, criminal codes uh, of uh, all the levels, and mostly in uh, criminal codes of uh, levels of entity and Bridge Code District, uh, the incriminations uh, in regard to Istanbul Convention are uh, contained. Uh, I will uh, start uh, to introduce our legal framework by uh, firstly uh, introducing you to uh, our, our definitions of uh, these terms. Uh, first of all, uh, gender-based violence is defined by the Article 6 of the Law on Gender Equality of Bosnia and Herzegovina, where we define it as any act that causes or could cause physical, psychological, sexual, or economic damage or suffering, including the threat of such an act, and limits a person or a group of people's ability to enjoy their human rights and freedoms in the public or private sphere. Uh, it is defined that the gender-based violence includes, but is not limited to, which is also very important. Uh, it is a domestic violence, violence in the wider community, violence committed or tolerated by government authorities or other author authorized bodies or individuals, and gender-based violence in the event of armed conflict. Uh, Talking about domestic violence, uh, I also already mentioned the uh, special laws like Specialis on protection against domestic violence uh, on the levels of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Republic of Srpska, and the Vrtko District. Uh, in the uh, uh, in the next part of my presentation, I will focus uh, mostly on the provisions in Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina since uh, uh, we have uh, so a limited time and uh, it is uh, ne nearly impossible to cover all of the parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, in Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, by its uh, uh, Lex Specialis law and protection from domestic violence of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the domestic violence is defined as acts committed by a family member that cause physical, psychological, or sexual pain or suffering and and or economic damage, including the threat of such acts cause fear or physical, psychological, or sexual violence and or economic damage to another family member. Uh, then uh, there are uh, acts enlisted which are considered as domestic violence. Uh, those are any use of physical force against the physical or psychological integrity of a family member, then any act by a family member that contain the threat of physical or psychological pain or suffering. Uh, causing fear or making uh, personal threats or the violation of the dignity of family member through blackmail or another form of coercion, physical attacks against a family member committed by another family member, irrespective of whether there was a physical injury or not, a verbal attacks, insults, swearing, name calling, or other forms of uh, serious harassment of family member by another family member, sexual harassment, stalking, and all other similar forms of harassment by another family member damage or uh, destruction of common property or property in the possession of a family member and use of physical force or causing fear for the purpose of depriving a person of his or her right uh, to economic independence by prohibiting him or her from working or by keeping him or her in a state of uh, dependence or sub subordination. There is also the use of physical and uh, psychological violence against children and neglecting their uh, education, as well as the same treatment against old and weak uh, persons and neglecting their care and treatment. Also forced isolation or limiting the freedom of movement uh, of family member and the failure to provide due care and attention and the failure to assist and protect the family member in spite of the legal obligation to do so. Uh, we have also uh, bylaws which are supporting the implementation of these uh, special uh, 
pieces of uh, legislation, and uh, they are called rule books. Uh, we have uh, the rule book on the implementation of protection measures falling within the scope of the police. Then the uh, rule book on the uh, manner and place of implementation of the protection measure of compulsory uh, psychosocial treatment of perpetrators of domestic violence, and rule book on the manner and place of implementation of the protection measure of compulsory alcohol, drug, psych and psychotropic uh, substance uh, addiction treatment for perpetrators of domestic violence. Uh, the, meeting, uh, the method I will uh, use uh, in introducing you to uh, incriminations uh, related to the Istanbul Convention uh, is to firstly uh, identify uh, which article of the Istanbul Convention uh, does it cover and uh, in which crimes uh, is it uh, substance. Uh, so uh, we will first approach the psychological violence as uh, provided for under uh, the Article 33 of the Istanbul Convention. Uh, we are now talking uh, mostly of the uh, Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. There is a crime which covers it, and it's called jeopardizing safety, and it's contained in the Article uh, 183 of the Criminal Code of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which in incriminates the situation wherein a person jeopardizes the safety of another person by seriously threatening to attack his or her life or body or causing agitation among citizens as a result of such a threat, which shall be punished uh, with a prison sentence of up to six months. Uh, also, there is a form when uh, it is committed uh, against several persons uh, by the same way, and it shall be punished with a prison sentence of three months to five years. And uh, there is also a situation when uh, which is particularly uh, important for us, when a person who jeopardizes the safety uh, of his or her spouse, a life partner, parent of uh, his or her child, or another person with whom he or she has or had a close relationship by stalking, frequently following them or harassing them in another way, which will be punished uh, with a fine or prison sentence of up to a year. Uh, also, psychological violence is covered by the crime of domestic violence, which is really broadly defined, and it is highly important for the uh, for whole my presentation because it covers many of the situations which fall under the scope of the violence against women and domestic violence. Uh, it is uh, incriminated uh, when a person uh, who jeopardizes the peace, uh, physical integrity, or uh, mental health of a member of his or her family through violence, brazen, or lack of failure, uh, sh it shall be punished with a fine or a prison sentence of up to a year. Uh, when this crime, uh, as referred to, uh, is uh, committed against a family member from the same household, it shall be punished with a fine or a prison sentence of up to three years. And if there is, uh, by committing of this crime, a uh, usage of weapon, dangerous instrument, or any other item that can seriously injure a body or damage the health for the commission of the criminal offense, uh, as referred uh, in the paragraph one and two, uh, the, par uh, the perpetrator shall be punished with a prison sentence of three months uh, to three years. Uh, there is also a situation when a family member sustains uh, serious bodily harm or damage to his or her, uh, his, uh, or her health. Uh, as a result of the criminal offenses uh, that are committed. Uh, and uh, if the, the, the same uh, crime is committed against a child or a minor, then the perpetrator shall be punished with a prison sentence of one to five years. Uh, also, uh, if a family member was killed as a result of the criminal offenses referred, uh, the perpetrator shall be punished with a prison sentence of uh, two to 15 years. And the last one, uh, uh, when a person kills a family member that he or she previously abused, or uh, shall be punished with a prison sentence of at least 10 years or a long-term uh, prison sentence. Uh, it is also very important that our law on protection from violence of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina specifies clearly uh, what are the violent actions. And those are, among other things, uh, endangering of the mental health of a family member, then causing fear or threat so the personal safety or violation of the dignity of family member through blackmail or another type of coercion, then any actions of family member that can cause the danger of physical or psychological pain or suffering, uh, fear or threats to personal safety or violation of the dignity of family member through blackmail or another type of coercion, uh, verbal attacks, insults, uh, swearing, name calling. So uh, we can see that it that it is mostly the same as it is. Uh, defined by what uh, represents domestic violence. So there we have use of physical and psychological violence against children, neglecting their ability, uh, the same treatment against old and weak persons, then forced isolation or, or limiting the freedom of a family member, 
and omission of due care and the attention and omission to assist and protect family member in spite of the legal obligation uh, to do so. Uh, stalking, as provided for under Article 34 of the Istanbul Convention, uh, is uh, covered by the uh, criminal offenses that contains elements of stalking, such as uh, jeopardizing uh, safety, which I already uh, mentioned, especially the paragraph 3. Uh, Article 27 of the Law on Gender Equality of Bosnia-Herzegovina also specifies the criminal offense of gender-based violence, harassment, and uh, sexual harassment. And Article uh, 7 of the Law on Protection from Domestic Violence of the Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina specifies uh, violent actions that include, among other things, stalking and all other similar forms of harassment of family member. Uh, talking about physical violence, as provided for under Article uh, 35 of the Istanbul Convention, uh, the Criminal Code of the Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina specifies criminal offenses that include elements of physical violence, such as murder, uh, grievous bodily injury harm, then uh, minor bodily injury, and domestic violence and violent behavior. Also, uh, by the law on gender equality of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, there is specification of the criminal offense of gender-based violence, harassment, and sexual harassment. And uh, also by uh, the definition of violent actions, uh, the situations uh, which fall under the scope of physical violence are uh, included uh, by the Article 7 of this law. Uh, when we approach the issue of the sexual violence, uh, including rape, as provided uh, for under Article 36 of the uh, Istanbul uh, Convention, uh, we have the criminal offenses which include elements of sexual violence and rape, uh, and they can be as listed, enlisted as uh, rape, sexual intercourse with a helpless person, uh, sexual intercourse by abuse of a power, coerced uh, sexual intercourse, uh, sexual intercourse with a child, sexual misconduct, sexual satisfaction in the presence of a child or a minor, solicitation of prostitution, human trafficking, organized human trafficking, abuse of child or minor for pornography, and introducing a child to pornography and incest. Uh, also, it is important to distinguish a child and a minor. Uh, according to our criminal code, uh, a child is a person under the age of 14, while the minor is a person under the age of 18. Uh, it is also uh, to be emphasized that uh, the Criminal Code of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina specifies the criminal offense of sexual intercourse with a child. And uh, in case of all the other uh, criminal offenses against uh, sexual freedom and morals, the law provides for qualifying circumstances uh, if they were committed against a minor or a child. In addition to this, the code specifies the criminal offense of sexual satisfaction in the presence of a child or a minor, abuse of a child or minor for, for, for pornography, and introducing a child to a pornography. Uh, forced marriage, uh, as provided for under Article uh, 37 of the Istanbul Convention, uh, is specified by the criminal offenses which include elements of forced marriage, uh, such as bigamy, uh, then covenants in contracting an illicit marriage, and common law marriage with a, a younger minor. Female genital uh, manipulation uh, is uh, unfortunately not regulated by the law. Uh, which is provided uh, under the Article 38 of the Istanbul Convention, but that, that, uh, we can conclude that uh, there is no crime which covers uh, female genital mutilation in our law. Uh, forced abortion, uh, as provided for under Article 39A of the Istanbul Convention, uh, is covered by the criminal offense of forced abortion, including elements thereof, namely legal termination of uh, pregnancy. Uh, the same situation as with the female genital uh, mutilation of poor sterilization as provided for under Article 39B of the Istanbul Convention is not regulated by the law. Uh, and uh, sexual harassment, which we already mentioned, as provided for under Article uh, 40 of the Istanbul Convention, uh, is uh, covered by the uh, incriminations in the law on gender equality of Bosnia and Herzegovina, where we have the criminal offenses of gender-based violence, harassment, and sexual harassment. Uh, also, uh, the paragraph uh, six of Article seven of the Law on Protection from Domestic Violence of Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina includes sexual harassment uh, through violent actions, which we already defined in the previous slides. And also, uh, one of the more uh, significance of our legislation in, is that uh, even of, in our labor law, uh, we have the prohibition of uh, employers and uh, other employees from uh, harassing or sexually harassing, committing uh, gender-based violence or mobbing employees or persons seeking employment uh, 
uh, with the employer. Uh, so uh, in that way, uh, we were in situation to observe uh, all the incriminations in relation to Istanbul uh, Convention in the legislation made me of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina as one entity of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And now we will uh, consider uh, the question of the proceedings regarding these crimes. So how are the crimes pro uh, proceed? Uh, we can say that in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, the prosecutor instigates the criminal proceedings uh, in accordance with the accusatory principle, uh, which means the that the prosecutor has a statutory obligation to institute proceedings ex officio uh, in the case of criminal offenses. The prosecutor must proceed with the criminal prosecution if there is evidence of the criminal offense and is under the obligation to undertake the necessary measures immediately after learning of the grounds uh, for suspicion uh, that the criminal offense has been committed. Talking about a report on domestic violence, uh, it can be submitted by the police, the Center for Social Welfare, or representatives of healthcare and education institutions, as well as non-governmental organizations, family member, and uh, by any citizen. Uh, the prosecutor actually must proceed with the criminal prosecution if there is evidence of the criminal offense and is under the obligation to undertake uh, the necessary measures immediately after learning of the grounds for suspicion that the criminal offense has been committed. Uh, one of the issues uh, which is observed clearly uh, uh, is that the, the fact that evidence is most often based on the statements of the victims. Uh, so if the part, this party or victim uh, refused to testify, uh, then the cases most often do not come to trial because of the lack of evidence. However, uh, the prosecutor can ensure a further course of proceedings by collecting additional evidence such as medical expertise and documentation, and the withdrawal of a statement or report alone does not affect the authority of the prosecutor to conduct the proceedings. Also, a situation which impacts uh, the proceeding is uh, the fact that uh, some persons have a right to refuse to testify, uh, and these include the marital partner or common law partner of the suspect or defendant, a parent or a child of the uh, suspect or defendant, and a foster parent or a foster child of the suspect or defendant. Uh, approaching the uh, issue of uh, victim and witness uh, protection, uh, which is uh, so uh, highly complex and very important uh, regarding uh, this topic, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina has uh, a legal framework on witness protection in place that outlines the procedure for ordering and enforcing protection measures. So it is really a comprehensive framework, uh, which is contained uh, for, uh, for example, we have uh, it, it uh, contained in the laws on the protection of witnesses under threat and vulnerable uh, witnesses, uh, which were uh, adopted by the states uh, and entities and particular districts, while the law on the witness protection program has been adopted uh, just at the state level. Also, uh, the fact is that we have uh, special pieces of uh, legislation uh, which consider the treatment of children and juveniles uh, as uh, not just offenders, but also as uh, victims and witnesses um, in the proceedings. So uh, these uh, laws uh, were enacted uh, on the protection and treatment of ch uh, children and juveniles involved in criminal proceedings. And they are at the level of entities, so Federation of Bosnia and Republika Srpska and Vertical District. And they stipulate specific rules for the treatment of children who are in conflict with the law and for young adults and children who are victims or witnesses uh, or are subject uh, to actions uh, by the courts. In Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, a received uh, of the report on domestic violence uh, filled with the police, representatives of the Center for Social Welfare, uh, accompanied uh, by representatives of the police, uh, if it is needed, uh, always visit the family in order to intervene. According to the information provided by the Ministry of Interior of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the uh, vulnerability assessment and the protective measure implementation plan are prepared for each decision on the imposing of a protective measure. So uh, let us see uh, which spectrum of measures uh, do we have in our uh, legislation. Actually, by the law on the protection of witnesses or under threat and vulnerable witnesses, uh, there is a, a wide spectrum uh, of measures aimed at limiting or completely avoiding contact uh, between the witness or victim and the uh, abuser. Uh, it provides for the giving of testimony uh, through use of technical means for the transfer of images and sound, uh, then the removal of the defendant from the courtroom and additional measures to ensure non-disclosure of the identity of the witness.
also by our criminal code, criminal procedure code and the law on gender equality. Uh, there are uh, specific safeguards, uh, such as restrictions uh, when examining a witness about his or her earlier sex life, which is highly important, then the obligation to obtain the consent of the witness or victim to carry out certain activities, or more precisely, activities that he or she previously engaged in, but bear, which is also uh, highly important, no relevance to the existence of the crime and the application of special urgency in all actions. Uh, also, uh, one uh, question which I would like to cover by my presentation is uh, the role of the non-governmental organizations uh, regarding the uh, combating uh, violence against women and domestic violence. Uh, and I can uh, say that uh, in Federation of Western Herzegovina, precisely uh, non-governmental organizations are being recognized as partners in combating violence. Uh, and they mostly provide shelter for victims of domestic violence and are financed through the budget of the Federal uh, Ministry of Labor and Social Policy. And if they meet uh, certain general and specific criteria, uh, then they can apply for funds through the public calls and the funds are allocated for financing programs and projects that are related, uh, for example, to accommodation and shelters for victims of torture and uh, violence, so-called uh, safe houses. Uh, I would like to refer to uh, two important surveys uh, which show us uh, the situation regarding the domestic violence and uh, violence against women in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, first of them was uh, conducted uh, in 2016, uh, where we uh, analyzed uh, when uh, actually uh, organization analyzed the judicial practice in case of domestic violence. And they took a sample of 150 judgments uh, with special focus on the sanction policy and meeting out mitigating and aggravating circumstances. And the key findings of the research were that the primary uh, victims of the domestic violence uh, were marital or common law partners and parents, and that the average length of prison sentence was eight months, the shortest being uh, just one month and the longest uh, two years and 10 months. That was the situation in that uh, moment. And, uh, the most frequent prison sentence for domestic violence was three months, uh, which is really a very, very mild sentence. It was in 50% uh, of cases. And it was observed that female judges uh, were being stricter uh, when it comes to imposing prison uh, sentences. Uh, uh, there can be observed that there is a, t a tendency of courts to consider uh, mitigating uh, circumstances more often than aggravating circumstances, uh, which is also uh, questionable. Uh, and also uh, in uh, all of the judgments, uh, percentage of them is 63% uh, uh, where uh, there are recidivists or the, uh, the persons who commit those crimes uh, more than once. And, uh, about 50% of the offenders uh, were convicted uh, for more than uh, two criminal offenses uh, in this regard. Uh, the next survey uh, which uh, took my attention and uh, which is highly important uh, because of its results uh, is the survey on the well being and safety of women in Bosnia and Herzegovina for 2018. And it shows the prevalence rates. Uh, the results are that, uh, that uh, 48 percent of women in Bosnia and Herzegovina had experienced some form of abuse, including uh, intimate partner violence and non-partner violence, stalking and sexual harassment since the age of 15. More specifically, uh, nearly four in 10 women, uh, about 38 percent of them, said that they had experienced violence from partner or non-partner, uh, which differs in duration of Bosnia and Herzegovina with 36 percent and 39 percent in the Republic of Serbia. Uh, statistics are also uh, highly important uh, in order to uh, show us uh, in which extent uh, is actually uh, domestic violence uh, present uh, in Federation of Western Herzegovina. And uh, we can see that uh, here we can uh, data uh, which is valid from the years of 2012 to 2018. And we can observe the trends uh, of the domestic violence cases. Uh, the first uh, the graphs uh, shows the number of reports of domestic violence cases per year. So uh, in the initial year uh, that we observe, it was uh, 1,661. Then uh, in the next year, uh, it was nearly the same, uh, 1,669. Uh, 
Uh, then in 2014, we have uh, 1,459 cases. Then uh, in 2015, we don't have uh, full data, but uh, by the available data, it was uh, around uh, 1,427 cases. From 2016, unfortunately, we don't have this uh, number uh, available. And in 2017, uh, we have 1,487 cases. And finally, in 2018, it was 1,242 cases. Uh, talking about a uh, number of cases which are uh, received by the cantonal prosecutor's offices, uh, we can see uh, the trend. So uh, when we are uh, talking uh, about the relation of all the cases, uh, which are number of reports, uh, and uh, cases which are uh, actually uh, received by the Central Prosecutor FCC, uh, it, uh, it uh, uh, obviously uh, decreases. So in uh, initial uh, year, we observed it was uh, 982. In 2013, it was uh, around 1,000. And then uh, it is around uh, seven and 800 in the next years. Uh, it uh, decreased even more uh, when we are talking about uh, the cases which are actually proceeded, uh, those are uh, which result in a criminal proceeding. Those are uh, uh, 536 cases in the inception phase of 2012, and then it is around uh, 500 in uh, 2013, and uh, something more than uh, 450 in 2014 and 2015, and in uh, for, uh, 2016 uh, we had. 386 uh, cases. Uh, from 2017, we don't have uh, data available. Talking about the number of judgments, uh, we can uh, say that uh, in the initial year we observed it was around 400 uh, judgments, uh, then followed by uh, 324 judgments in 2013. And uh, in next years, it was uh, around uh, 400 uh, uh, with something less uh, than 400 in 2015 and uh, 2017. Uh, for me, a uh, more important part is to observe uh, which kind of uh, sanctions that we impose uh, in these cases. So not just that uh, these uh, cases are uh, adjudicated, but also which sanction is imposed. And we can observe that uh, prison term is uh, not so frequently imposed uh, just in uh, 2014, it was higher rate with 26%. Uh, uh, mostly, it was around 10% in 2012 and 2013, uh, then uh, around 12 and 13% in 2015 and 2016, and in 18% in uh, 2017. Uh, there is also a percentage of fines imposed, and uh, mostly uh, it is a suspended uh, sentence that is imposed, uh, which is uh, probably uh, the biggest problem. We are talking that, uh, about the cases which are adjudicated, so which are uh, being proceeded and uh, that end in uh, the judgment, but not always, uh, I would say, adequate sanction is imposed. So not always uh, there is a sanction which will uh, actually uh, serve for the further uh, preventing of the violence. And we have a small percentage of other sanctions imposed. Uh, also, it is important to assess uh, the issue of the people who are accommodated in safe houses uh, totally per year. We are talking about number of eight safe, uh, safe houses in uh, whole Bosnia and Herzegovina, and five of them are in Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we can say that uh, percentually uh, there is around 10% of the uh, victims which uh, are accommodated in these safe houses of or the reported case of violence and half of the persons accommodated uh, in the safe houses were children. Uh, in initial year, it was 395 persons, then uh, followed by 323, then uh, 373, then uh, something more than 250. Uh, then again, the same result in 2016, and it increased, uh, it decreased slightly in next year, 2017 and 2018. Uh, the topic which really uh, took my attention was also a so-called uh, shadow pandemic or silent pandemic, uh, which actually refers to the cases of uh, violence against women and uh, the domestic violence uh, during the, the time of the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. 
I would like to start by a, a statement which was uh, stated by the Director General of, of the, the World Health Organization, uh, which uh, made the constatation that uh, unlike uh, as uh, COVID-19, uh, the shadow pandemic or cases of domestic violence and violence against women cannot be stopped by vaccine, and that is the problem. So we don't have a very efficient weapon uh, to stop this uh, phenomena, which is observed even in bigger numbers in the time of the pandemic, where the victims, unfortunately, are uh, so-called uh, left uh, with, uh, with their uh, partners, and uh, there is a higher risk because of this trend of isolation measures uh, that uh, the any kind of uh, violations are present. Uh, NGOs in Bosnia and Herzegovina report on a 20% increase in domestic violence cases during the pandemic, while the available statistics uh, do not show a significant increase uh, regarding the cases uh, which are uh, proceeded. Uh, it is uh, not uh, very shocking to see that uh, there is uh, this, uh, I would say, uh, difference between the uh, data that are in official statistics and in NGO reports, because uh, we know that uh, it is not uh, just so that we say shadow pandemic or silent pandemic. It is always a pandemic which is not so uh, clearly observable and that uh, it is uh, not that all the cases are reported, uh, not all the cases are actually visible to hold the community, and therefore maybe these results of uh, NGOs are more important than the uh, official statistics. Uh, I will talk uh, just solely uh, on the uh, Canton Sarajevo, uh, where we can observe uh, that there was uh, during the pandemic, so now I'm talking the, uh, from the period of uh, March 2020 to uh, June uh, 2021, there was totally 354 cases, uh, and in the first year of pandemic, so uh, in 2020, it was uh, 243 cases, and in uh, ongoing pandemic in 2021, we had uh, 111 cases. For comparison, in same reference periods a uh, year uh, before, there was 440 cases, uh, and in the uh, so reference period uh, for the year of, of the beginning of, of uh, pandemic, we can take a year of 2018, we can uh, there observe 288 cases, and uh, in the uh, year after, we can observe 152 cases. So by the official statistics, uh, even in Canton Sarajevo, we cannot see that there is a high increase of the uh, cases, uh, even uh, we can uh, say that uh, there is a trend of uh, decreasing of the cases. But I would not say that uh, it is uh, the only uh, information we can rely to, because as we know, uh, it is really a silent phenomena and not all the cases uh, which are present are uh, visible through the official reports and uh, official statistics uh, that we have. Uh, that was the uh, final point I wanted to assess uh, by my uh, presentation. So this uh, shadow pandemic uh, is really uh, very important topic to be approached and uh, I hope that we will have uh, later the opportunities to assess uh, these uh, numbers which are present uh, in regard to domestic violence and violence against a woman uh, during the time of pandemic. Now I would like to thank you for your attention and also to thank the Professor Dr. Adam Sazor for his kind invitation uh, for taking a part in my lecture in this uh, summer school. I'm also open for all of your questions in the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Kanitza. It's really difficult to answer questions about a country in many issues concerning the Istanbul Convention in such a short time, but you put it very well in a compact way. And so thank you again for your enlightening presentation about the uh, country report of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Before moving on to the Q&A parts, I would like to read you Professor Adam Sözer's message to Kanita. My dear, you, colleague, yeah. <laughs> My dear colleague, Kanita Purusjanovic, thank you very much for your contribution to our Law on the Bosphorus Summer School with Country Report of Bosnia-Herzegovina. You were very clear regarding the legislation, implementation, and current situation in Bosnia-Herzegovina. 
With Country Report, we are trying to get insight from different countries, and thanks to you, our participants will benefit from your report while preparing their presentation. You have been with us for many years. You have started to join our programs when you were a student. You have already participated our summer school program many times as a lecturer and participant, let alone other ones. Some of them are International Crime and Punishment Film Festival and Turkish Criminal Law Days. Now you are criminal law research assistant and we are continuing to work on joint program. I hope that our work will continue for the future. I would like to thank you for your contributions again. I hope we will see you in another event soon face to face. All the best, Adam Sözer. Thank you, Begum. Uh, it's really my pleasure and I'm very happy uh, to hear that I'm really always uh, very happy to take uh, part in all of the programs which are organized by your faculty and also uh, by uh, especially the chair of criminal law because you really always uh, make a great uh, teamwork on organizing these kinds of events even now in the time when the pandemic unfortunately uh, does not let uh, meet us in person uh, in Istanbul but uh, I hope also that we will resume our meetings in Istanbul uh, when the pandemic is under the control thank you yeah we all hope to as thank far you, as Kermit, i see uh, your uh, screen is uh, you you need uh, your presentation now no i don't need it okay. i just can you close this please yes of course is it closed now yes, yes. okay uh, thank you very much you heard uh, my message uh, thank you professor uh, uh, really very important. Uh, I know you when you was a student, uh, you are yes, an academician. Uh, uh, I know and, and I hope uh, we uh, will uh, work uh, together. Uh, I am uh, very happy uh, for our uh, together works. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kanita. Thank you, Professor. I'm really happy to uh, have a possibility to work together with you. It is a great honor. Thank you. Now, question and answer. Thank you. Yes, Professor. Uh, as far as I see, um, participants do not have any questions yet. Meanwhile, I would like to ask a question that has been on my mind. Uh, I noticed that in the criminal offenses you explained, Kanita, as incriminations in your country, um, there is no separate criminal offense uh, of femicide. Firstly, I would like to ask, did I get uh, what you said right? And secondly, what is the situation regarding murders of women in your country? I mean, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you. Thank you, Begum, for your question. Uh, it is really important issue, uh, which you uh, actually got uh, right. Uh, we don't have a separate criminal offense uh, of femicide and it is covered by other crimes. So uh, I can say that uh, it is a kind of a deficiency of our legislation and uh, in the next years uh, we we should think about uh, incriminating the uh, crime of femicide uh, itself. Uh, talking about trends uh, regarding the femicide, uh, we can say that uh, we we, of course, uh, need to observe these uh, numbers in terms of the fact that we are a very small country. So when we give uh, just a number, it's not a big uh, number, but uh, it is an observable issue in Boston Heads. You know, I can say that in the last six years, uh, I uh, read that we had a uh, totally uh, 56 uh, cases of femicide, which is not a uh, so big number when comparing to other countries, but uh, having a, uh, in mind uh, the Bosnia and Herzegovina is a very small country. So we can say that there is uh, unfortunately an issue of femicides. Uh, it is uh, not uh, so, uh, so big, but uh, we can observe uh, these trends. And unfortunately, I would not say that uh, in all the cases, uh, appropriate sanctions are given. So uh, probably uh, it would be better if we uh, could incriminate it as separate offense so that uh, in all the cases, it is, it is very important what is adjudicated uh, that in uh, every judgment that is written that it is a crime of a femicide and that it is approached so uh, as uh, we know it should be uh, in, in line uh, with the Istanbul Convention and the values in this regard. Thank you, Begum, for your question.
And I thank you to your answer. Uh, it was so clear. And we have now two uh, different questions. First of all, has Bosnia and Herzegovina's historic background, specifically the breakoff of Yugoslavia, played a part in gender-based violence in the country, or, uh, country? And if so, how? Thank you. Uh, would I answer the question now or uh, so? I have no time, thank you. Uh, I would say that the breakdown of Yugoslavia, uh, actually even that war or uh, the time of the war uh, is a time where we can observe a high uh, rate of uh, gender-based violence and uh, violence against women and domestic violence. So also in that uh, time, maybe even more, uh, we are talking about the issue of the violence against women uh, since we know uh, how uh, highly uh, they are uh, always uh, affected by the crimes which are uh, committed uh, during the time of the war. Uh, after the, the war time, uh, also we can say that uh, the fact that we are now an uh, uh, independent country, uh, which is a kind of a mixed country, so we have a very complex uh, organization of state, uh, we can observe that uh, in some parts, uh, especially uh, in the places uh, when there are uh, all the constituent peoples, so, or uh, Bosnians, Croats, and uh, Serbs, uh, there can be observed uh, maybe a statistically higher rate of uh, violence against women, which is uh, kind of uh, gen gender-based motivated and also motivated by all of the uh, conflicts which uh, took place uh, during the war time. Now, I would not say that it has uh, so many uh, implications of this uh, period of wartime, uh, but uh, of course uh, it uh, played a role and uh, even during the wartime we know that uh, the women were those who were really uh, highly affected by the uh, situation and uh, that they were more prone to all the crimes which were committed and that there was uh, even more violence against women than we can observe in a normal situation. I hope that uh, I gave an answer uh, right and that that was the question uh, of the participant. Thank you for your answer. And we have another question. Thank you for your great uh, presentation. Are there many cases of forced marriage in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Are there any current open cases in courts of Bosnia and Herzegovina connected to forced marriages or were there cases before? Thank you. Uh, it is also a very important uh, topic. I especially followed uh, the cases of forced marriage, which are so broadly discussed in Turkey, and uh, I was trying to compare it for myself in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I would not say that we have so high rate of uh, forced marriage, uh, even though, uh, especially in uh, these suburbs, so not uh, cities, but uh, the smaller uh, uh, places in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, probably there uh, the percentage of these cases is uh, higher. And uh, I'm not sure that uh, the court statistics, so the real cases which are adjudicated and uh, the real situation uh, meet each other. So uh, probably there is a higher number. We have some of the cases which are adjudicated. Uh, it is not uh, some of the biggest issues in Bosnia and Herzegovina in uh, regarding to Istanbul Convention, but uh, we can say that it is, is an issue which should be approached better, especially uh, having in mind uh, the welfare of a child and uh, all the deep consequences it leaves uh, regarding the future of uh, the person who is involved uh, in this kind of situation. So uh, not the biggest issue in Bosnia Herzegovina, but uh, we can say that it is present and uh, not uh, probably in this uh, urban parts of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, so the parts which are uh, bigger cities, but probably the parts which are uh, suburbs or the, uh, the smaller cities, it is, uh, I would say, probably uh, more present. Thank you again, Kanita. Thank you, Karim. I hope that my answer was clear. Yeah, it was so clear. And thank you again for your presentation. Uh, as far okay. as I can see, there is no other question. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, our professor, Professor Adam Cesar, who lead the summer school program and 
everyone who organized and contributed to the preparation of the program. I would also like to thank the participants who contributed by making presentations. Uh, both the overall program and today's presentations uh, have been really helpful. However, I would like to point out that unfortunately there is still no gender equality in the world today. And therefore we often have to talk about women's rights, positive discrimination and other related issues. It's really important to organize such programs until we have a more equal world. For this reason, it was an honor for me to have the opportunity to present these sessions today. And I would like to thank you, dear participants, for attending both by listening and asking questions. I hope the pandemic is over soon and we can make this kind of academic programs face to face again as before. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day. Have a nice day all and thank you for your attention.